Let's get our Heavenly Highway hymn books out tonight. Let's turn to page number 31. Won't it be wonderful there? Page number 31 tonight in your Heavenly Highway hymn books. Page number 31. Won't it be wonderful there? Page number 31. 31. When with the Savior we enter the glory land, won't it be wonderful there? Ended the troubles and cares of the story land, won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear, joyously sing. One fourteen, kneel at the cross. One fourteen. Page number one fourteen. Page number one fourteen. Kneel at the cross. Christ will meet you there.
And we're going to sing three more songs and let Jim preach. And Jim, come on, get ready to preach here. Uh, and I want to say to you, all of you, again, be mindful of the time because we're going to have prayer meeting at 730. You all righty? And just, I, I know that I, I like to aggravate you guys, but it's good for you. Good for you. Amen. All right. I know some of you think I ought to practice or to preach, but that's a different thing. All right. Amen. Eat, preaching is easy. The living's hard. Come on, Jim. Preach for us tonight. Appreciate it. Help him preach tonight. And I'm looking forward to prayer meeting time. I'm telling you. Thank you for coming out tonight. I do trust that God will uh, bless you for coming out to hear his word preached. And gather together to pray uh, with each other, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Uh, you guys got that keyboard ready? I really, really like that. You guys do a good job with that. Okay. Uh, well, uh, welcome to everybody online, and uh, thank you for coming here. And let's uh, let's open it with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for uh, your goodness to us, Lord, and your mercy, and your long suffering, Father. Thank you for uh, gathering us together this evening, Lord, as brothers and sisters, Lord, that we can break the bread of life with each other, Lord. We can learn of you. And, learn about ourselves, that we can strengthen our, be strengthened in the inner man, Lord, our faith would be increased, Lord, that our eyes would be uh, more on you and more on eternity, Father. Help us tonight, Lord, to receive what you have for us, to put it in our hearts, to apply it to our lives, Father. And Lord, we do pray, Lord, that the lost would be saved tonight, Lord. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the Bible says that our life is short. Uh, Psalms chapter 90, uh, verse 10 and 12, get that one on deck here. Our life is short. Many, many times in Scripture it, we are told that our lives are short. It's compared to a vapor. Our lives are comp uh, compared to a blade of grass, a flower in the field, that the wind passes over and it's gone. Our lives are short. Uh, my, father, my father just passed away this past year, and one thing, he had cancer for about three years, and what he said more than one time to me, he said it more than once, is he's, he said, I know it's my end, I'm just surprised at how fast it got here. Yeah. Our lives are short, wow. and he, he was 82, I mean, he didn't die young. Mm -hmm. So uh, it does, it goes fast. Uh, Psalm chapter 90, verse 10 and 12 says, the days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is there strength, labor, and sorrow. For it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. In this passage of scripture, God commands us to number our days. You don't just trundle through this life paying no attention to the expiration of your days. Pay attention to them. See how many are out in front of you, how many have, been, have gone behind you. Pay attention to the number of your days. Not only that, but in this passage, he connects his wrath and anger to the numbering of our days, which indicates the responsibility that we have with what he has given us, our lives. Pay attention to your lives, your days of your lives. In Micah, this, the, the call appears, arise ye and depart. There is coming a day where you and I will hear that call, arise ye and depart. It's over. So while in this life, the Father has some work for you to do. That's what we're going to look at tonight. The pilgrim's highway is a certain path. All who travel on it are in the way. It starts at the straight gate and leads them along the narrow way. But there are many tasks to be done along the way, and our Lord has at least one for you. Whether you are a king or a beggar, successful or simple, a poet or a plowboy, a northerner or a southerner, a youth or aged, there are many laborers, but they all have the same goal, striving for the same end. That is to proclaim Jesus as king and to labor for that kingdom. 
What is our message about this kingdom? In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 1 through 4, proclaims it. Zechariah 6, 11 through 13 foretells it. Zechariah 9, verse 1, puts it plainly. Deuteronomy 32, 1 through 4. Give ear, oh, this is the proclamation. Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. All his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. That's the proclamation for our goal. To, to, ascri to ascribe majesty to Christ. That's the message. Zechariah 6, 11 through 13 foretells it. Then take silver and gold and make crowns and set them upon the head of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch... And he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and, it sh and shall sit and rule upon his throne. And he shall be a priest unto his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. That's Jesus Christ on his throne. Amen. Zechariah 9, chapter 1, just puts it plainly. Read the last part of that verse. When the eyes of man, as of all the tribes of Israel shall be towards the Lord. That's the end, folks. He's on his throne, and all the eyes of men are on him. That's what's in the heart of the faithful follower of Christ. That's our message in this Pilgrim's Highway. This spirit ought to be in the heart of every Christian. The verse, the, these verses encompass the hope and desire of every Christian whose heart and mind is stayed on thee. His heart is warm, his walk is straight. His hands are busy. If this is what you want for your life, then something called the old paths will become your desire. Amen. Wherein is the good way? Amen. You will search for and be guided by ancient landmarks and will be thankful to the one who put them there for you and your good and for your guidance for to find rest under your souls. Written on each landmark is a warning. Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. For there are certain men who have gone the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam, who continuously seek to move these landmarks. But our Lord exhorts to earnestly contend for the faith and that you build up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping yourselves in the Lord of the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. If your desire is to serve the Lord, these are things that will be in your heart. Nehemiah was such a man. He set his hands to build the wall, but not without trouble, people trouble. Particularly two guys named Sanballat and Tobiah. There will always be Sanballats and Tobias. Matthew 13, 24 through 30. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. This passage of scripture Christ tells us plainly there are going to be sand ballots and Tobias in every church. They're going to be here. I'm not here to point any out. That's not my goal tonight. That's the Holy Spirit's job. But there will be Tobias and sand ballots in every church. 
I would like to read Nehemiah chapter 6, 10 through 14. If you can turn there if you want, they'll put it up on the board here. Uh, but this is the, the, the body, this is the text, reference text of the message tonight. Nehemiah chapter 6, 10 through 14. Nehemiah was in Jerusalem by this time. He was already building the wall. Uh, in the process of his work, Sanballat and Tobiah, they, they had already been around for a while, but they're just really making trouble for him. And we're going to take this passage of Scripture and really zo zero in on what's here. Afterward, I came unto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mehetabil, who was shut up, and he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple. And let us shut the doors of the temple, for they will come to slay thee. Yea, in the night they will come to slay thee. And I said, Should such a man as I flee? And who is there that being as I am would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go. And lo, I perceived that God had not sent him, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me, for Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. Therefore was he hired, that I should be afraid, and do so, and sin, and that they might have matter for an evil report, that they might reproach me. I thank my God, I thank thou upon Tobiah and Sambal according to these their works, and on the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets that would have put me in fear. This passage is what we're going to be dealing with for the rest of the message. I would like to address three people tonight. Nehemiah's, Shemaiah's, and Noadiah's, and Sanballat's and Tobias. First, Nehemiah's. Do you walk by faith and not by sight? Do you cry after knowledge and lift up your voice for understanding? In all your ways, do you acknowledge him so he directs your paths? Are you broken by your sin? Does your spirit say, he must increase and I must increase? If this desire is in your heart to live this way, then you have the spirit of Nehemiah. You see, Nehemiah was first molded by the Holy Spirit of God in the heart. He was made right in the spirit, and then he was given the work. Amen. Amen. Whatever the work, it does not matter. Be diligent and entangle not yourselves with the affairs of this life, that you may please him who hath chosen you to be a soldier. Amen. Don't get tangled up in this world, in this life. It can, be from, it can come from any different, it can come through your, 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 just what you like in life, the things you enjoy in life. It can come through troubles in life. It can come, but don't get entangled up in them because it will, that, that will remove you and make you unable to labor right. for the Lord. Right. That's God's warning to us. 2 Timothy 2.4, I think it is. Don't get tangled up in this world. Amen. This message or this Nehemiah, this is particularly aimed at pastors and fathers and those in authority. It's anybody, who, if you've got a job from God, this applies to you. You're a Nehemiah. But particularly, it's pastors, fathers, and those in authority. Nehemiah was a leader. He was a ruler in, Israel, in Jerusalem. So listen and be encouraged tonight for what God has for you from his word. Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. God says to you, Nehemiah, be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, Amen. nor forsake thee. Amen. Be encouraged tonight. If you have a heart and a spirit to be a Nehemiah, God wants you to be encouraged tonight. Amen. You need to be encouraged because when you set about to work for the Lord, they will laugh you to scorn. They will try to sabotage your work by trying to join you. They will mock your work. They will conspire to fight against you. They will try to put you in fear. They will trick you. They will trap you. They will be persistent. They will falsely accuse you. They will run to the king to give a, an evil report about you. 
They will manipulate people to turn on you. They will seek those close to you to use them against you. They will use people. They will use base people to spread the net for your feet. They will hire people to dig up evil reports on you. They will gather and collect people to themselves to give the illusion that they are credible and their, their accusations are true. As always, they will wear a mask of innocence and play the victim. Something I'd like to point out here. Do you know that during this entire time that these two men were trying to destroy Nehemiah, they were never able even to launch an attack on him? Do you know why? Because he was so well protected. The people of that city were surrounding him. That's a message to this congregation, to every congregation. You surround your pastor. Amen. Amen. And you stop Tobiah in Samballot from even being able to get within a range of hurting him. Amen. That's a message to every wife and child in this church. Surround your father. Amen. Be loyal to your father. Amen. Don't let the Tobias and Samballots even get close to launching an attack on him. Amen. The devil's after those in authority. And he's going to send his Tobias and Sam Ballots after him every time. The work is the Lord's. Trust him, and he will bring it to pass. Nehemiah cried out to God, Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Be encouraged. If God's given you a work, be encouraged. And get busy. I'd like to next address the Shemaiahs and Noadiahs. Shemaiah and Noadiah were Israelites. They apparently were prophets, false prophets. You're in the church and you're saved, Shemaiah and Noadiah. You're pretended prophet and prophetess. You have some influence in the church, some reputation. You have the trust of your pastor but you are treacherous and that you will sell yourself to the enemies of God and that under the pretense of communion. You are able to feign concern all the while laying a net for Nehemiah's feet. Your price is that which you lust after, pride, position, reputation to be somebody. Nehemiah chapter 6, 17 and 18. Can you just scroll down there? You guys, this looks, read this. Moreover, in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters unto Tobiah, and the letters of Tobiah came unto them. For there were many in Judah sworn unto him, because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, the son of Ara, and his son, Johanan, had taken the daughter of Meshulam, the son of Berikbah. That sounds an awful lot to me like some kind of a popular group thing going on. This is the list of who's who's. And they all want to be a part of it. That's who Shemaiah and Noadiah so sell themselves to. Nehemiah does not pray against Shemaiah and Noadiah, but he leaves it in the hand of God. Amen. For God is the avenger of falsehood and wrong. That's right. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Sure. What's the cause of your dissembling, Nehemiah? What you need to do is number your days. You need to take a look at your life and what you've done, how much you've got left and what you've done with what's already gone by. That's my counsel to you tonight. Quit these vain pursuits and repent. Go to the wall and start laying bricks. Amen. Amen. Your life's not going to last forever. There's only so much time we have here to labor. Why? Would you throw it away right. for the crumbs of popularity right. or anything else for that matter? Amen. Finally, I'd like to talk to the Sam Ballots and Tobias. The Bible says they're in every church. Yeah. Guys, if you want to put up Deuteronomy 32.25, I'll get to it here in a minute. Go ahead and put it up. Sam Ballot 
The name Samballot means enemy in secret. He was a Mobite. Tobiah was an Ammonite. They weren't Jews. Sam Ballots and Tobias and churches are not saved. Amen. They just pretend to be. And they live amongst God's people. Yeah. Tobiah even had a room in the temple. The, the, the priest that was supposed to be over, it was a storage room or something like that. And the priest that was supposed to be overseeing that area of the temple cleaned it out and made an apartment for Tobiah to live in. They live amongst God's people, but they're not God's people. These are lost enemies of God amongst the church, pretending to be part of the body. I have a word for you. Repent or perish. You are enemies of God. You seek to scatter the sheep. You seek to murder God's prophets. You're proud and full of self-will like your father, the devil. You imagine you're safe because of your subtlety and your smoothness. But God says in Deuteronomy 32, to me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. They make haste. Number your days. God says they're making haste. God's judgment is pursuing you currently. You may not have much time. Tonight might be the last opportunity you have to be saved. Your time is short. This verse tells you it is. Your foot shall slide in due time. You may think that you're not working against the pastor, Nehemiah. I'm not doing any of those things. Can you put up Matthew 12, 30? He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. If you are not saved, you are not with God. Amen. That means that you're against him. If you are not saved, you are not gathering. You cannot gather with God. That verse means that you are scattering. Whether you see it or not, this verse says you are. If you're not saved, today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. I know this is a, a, a somber message, that I, it, but it is a somber message. This is a warfare in this church. And it will be until Christ comes. There's always going to be sand ballots and Tobias. And if you're one of these Noadias, Shemaniahs, put it down. Repent. And get to work for the Lord. Take, start taking prayer requests tonight, and uh, we're going to. I don't know how to say this other than I just want us to really. I tell you, I want to say first of all how God's dealing with me is just about my own personal walk with Him. And uh, the Bible said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And so, one first thing tonight I want us to pray about is just that we would get personally right with God. So, I want us just tonight, right now just as our first prayer time is Lord I want us to pray like David said search me and know me and see if there be any he just got through talking about sometimes we don't even know our own spiritual condition and God unless the light of God shines on us and I'm not trying to be you know over spiritual I just know this that we've got a camp meeting coming up and I don't want to hinder the Lord amen and I don't want anything hinder our joy in the Lord and so tonight Let's just pray individually. And if the Lord brings something to your mind, or maybe right now, just say, Lord, it's the truth. Just all he wants us to do is confess and be honest with him. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven.